Hi everyone, it's Stacy from PeonyLaneDesigns.com and I'm coming to you from my new she shop. So if you've seen the video, if not, I can put a link in the cards. I never know what size it's on, so I'm just gonna do this. Somewhere up here, there's gonna be a link in the cards. Um, I had this room. It was my daughter's nursery. You could probably tell by the birds. Aren't they cute though? I love bluebirds, so I'm leaving them. So if this bothers you, you're not gonna to wanna to watch any more videos because they're, they're all gonna happen in here. This is my shop. Um, I needed a space I could work in the winter time and this is it. I used to have a job where I worked from home and I no longer work from home. All I do, not in an office setting. So it was time to get rid of the big desk and make this into a functional space for me. I'm so excited. It's not done yet. You can tell from the junk on the shelves. I haven't sorted or organized anything and that shelf right there isn't going to be there. Um, but I wanted to stop and do a tutorial because it kind of gets boring for me to just do organizing and cleaning and doing all that good stuff. I got all the carpet up. I've got all that good stuff done and I just wanted to do a quick tutorial for you. One of the reasons why is because as you know I sell Junk Gypsy and Bungalow 47 chalk paints and one of my clients called me because she was struggling with the paint. She had never used chalk and clay paint before and um, I, I have told people many times if you've never used it before that's my cat coming in the cat door. Hello star! It's it's my cat, not my daughter's cat. Um, he thinks he lives in this room because his potty box is in here and hopefully he doesn't firebomb it. No, he's just looking around wondering who I'm talking to. Um, she called because she was struggling with the paint and I've told people many times, if you've never used chalk or clay based paints, you're gonna hate it the first time out. If you don't know what you're doing, you may actually hate it and go, why does everybody love this paint and, and rave about it? So I thought I would do a tutorial for you, a chalk paint 101, so that you guys, if you haven't used it before and you're really struggling, hopefully this will help. This is a class that I've taught many times at um, local learning places here and some shops that have asked me to come in and teach a chalk paint tutorial. So they paid me $30 a person to do this. You guys are getting it for free. Lucky you, win-win. So here's what you're gonna wanna get. First of all, I'm gonna dispel a myth for you. This is a brush from the dollar store. You do not need a $30 brush to paint with chalk paint. But Stacy, I was told you need special brushes. You don't. No, you don't. The paint is expensive enough without paying for an expensive brush. Now, I personally like Purdy brushes, which are slightly more expensive than a dollar store one, but I'm gonna do this tutorial with this dollar store brush because this is what I teach the class with. I literally bring a dollar store brush in and teach these people for $30 a piece how to paint with chalk paint. Hold on one second. Sorry, the cat was using the cat box and I didn't think you guys wanted to hear that scratching in the litter and all that good stuff. <laughs> I don't really want to hear it, but. I'm gonna do a, a, a video where I make a house for that stupid cat box, like an epic scent-proof box. <laughs> anyway, so back to the brushes. So no, I don't care what you've been told. The reason why, if you've ever taken a different chalk painting class and you've gone in there and they're like, you have to use this brush. It's because they're making money on the brush. <laughs> That's why it's $30. They're gonna sell you a brush. I don't sell brushes. I do sell chalk paint, but I don't sell brushes because I don't believe you need them. I don't believe you need a special brush. That's just not in my nature to sell you something you don't need. Um, <laughs> I know I'm gonna get hate mail from other people that sell them. Sorry, you're wrong. You don't need special brushes. So I'm gonna prove it. Here's my dollar store brush. And I really do want you guys to follow along. So if you don't have chalk paint, get some chalk paint. Make sure it's real chalk paint. How do I know if it's real chalk paint, Stacy? Well, let me tell you. Take your paint, let's open it up. 
Put your nose right in it and smell it. Does it smell like paint? That's not chalk paint. I'm gonna say that one more time. Does it smell like paint? That's not chalk paint. This smells like clay. You wanna know why? Because it's chalk and clay based paint. It should not smell like the latex paint. If you have a paint that you, you think is chalk paint and you open it up and it smells like anything other than clay or chalk, you don't have chalk paint. You have a latex paint with a chalky finish. I have literally been in a battle at a craft fair with a woman who told me she made her own chalk paint. Nope, you can't make chalk paint. Yes, you can, I saw it on Pinterest. No, you can't make chalk paint, you can't. I promise you what you'll have is latex paint at the end of that science experiment. There is no way to convert latex paint into chalk paint. You can give it a chalky texture. You can maybe make it stick to stuff without prepping, but I really highly doubt it's gonna stay because latex paint, you absolutely have to prep that surface. I have worked with latex and I like latex paint. It does take some prep and some effort. If you go to the craft store and you get a paint that says chalky finish, not chalk paint. Chalky finish just means it has an ultra matte texture or sheen. So it has a very, very matte, matte to it. That's what chalky finish is. Chalk paint is actually a mineral and clay based paint. No to low VOC depending on the brand that you get. Some are no, some are low. Extremely low VOC. Do not buy into the belief that you can make chalk paint. If you What you're going for is just a matte finish, chalky texture, feel free. But this is not your video because then you're still using a latex paint. This video will not help you at all with latex paint because they're two different animals. You cannot possibly, possibly believe that you can make chalk paint. That's like me taking a liquid foundation for makeup ladies and then saying I changed it into a mineral powder because I dried it out. Ah, no, that doesn't work that way. Hang on. He's back. He's back scratching in the cat box. Can you hear it? He didn't, he didn't cover it well enough, he thinks, the first time, so he needs to finish his job. Very meticulous cat. You done? Star, are you done? No, I don't want you to sit on my lap, no. No. Go away. Go find something else to do. Go somewhere else. Okay, so he's gone. Anywho, so ladies, you cannot make a mineral uh, face powder by drying up some liquid foundation. Oil-based liquid foundation, you can't. And you can't make a chalk paint by adding some powder to it. Done. I'm done with my rant. Um, so I do want you to follow along though. So get a brush. Get two pieces of wood. If you don't want to get two pieces of wood, use the back side. I don't care. You just need some wood. Doesn't have to be a one by. Any wood. Any wood you want. It can even have another coat of paint on it if you want. Um, I don't really care. Just get something to practice on. We're gonna practice using chalk paint. Um, get chalk paint. You can certainly order some from me if you want, or go to your local distributor and get an actual chalk paint. Get a sample. Because if you don't like the product, you're not gonna to wanna to be stuck with a quart. If you love the product, you may wanna buy a quart, but don't go there right away. This thing is gonna do, um, <laughs> This purple has done um, in four drawers on a dresser. It has done like a little table, kids table, and I still have quite a bit left. 
it goes a long, 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 long way because chalk paint is very high pigment. So get your paint, any colors you want. I, I want you to get two contrasting colors if you have them. If you don't, then skip it. I'm going to show you something with two contrasting colors, but we're going to do the 101 anyway. So we're going to do 101. You just need one color paint. Follow along with me. I promise. I promise it'll be worth it. You're going to want to get water in this very special high-tech container, y'all. Look at this. This was this cost me a fortune. I had to dig it. It cost me my self-respect. I'd dig it out of the trash. My family thrilled me at the end of the week. Um, yeah, get a can. Eat a can of tuna. I don't care what kind of can it is. But you're going to put a little water in there. Tap water. Just tap water. You know what I forgot? Oh, no, I don't. I didn't because I have one down here because I'm in my she shop. Oh. <sighs> Dropping things. So I'm in my she shop, so I have a rag. Get a rag. Get the water. Get a brush. Get your paint. I'll wait. Get it? Got it? Good. All right. Here's what I want you to do. And this is what I do when I teach my class. I want you to take the dry brush. Dry brush. I want you to dip it directly into the chalk paint. See, look at that. Look at that. And the thing I want you to do with it is take your board and go right onto the board. And just start doing this because this is what most people do. They treat it like a latex and they just start running paint along the edge. Which is fine. Except the chalk paint dries extremely fast. So if you're following along with me and you were doing this, did you feel it drag? Like as you were pulling on it, did you feel that drag that you don't normally get? Like it was drying as you're painting it. Yeah, because it was. It literally dries that fast. It's so quick drying. And this is why I have two pieces of wood because like this, I got a lot. I saturated my brush, so this is, but you can see it stops, it starts pulling paint off and stops spreading. So, I mean, you can do this and cover things. You can stipple and cover. But as I'm dragging, it's pulling the paint off. You can even see like the different colors coming off. Coming through. So you're seeing the lines there. See those light colored lines? It's pulling the paint away as I'm dragging it because it's drying. And that's what happens like when you're working with something like a latex paint, they have a product called Floetrol. Floetrol I think that's how you say it that helps you extend the drying time of a latex if you're working on a larger piece. And essentially, you need to do the same thing with the chalk paint, but you don't need Floetrol. You just need to do this. Take the brush, dip it in the water. And now I'm not telling you to get it dripping wet because a lot of people, they'll go to the extreme and they get their brush too wet. You're just gonna get it damp. And if you dip it in the water and then you dry it off, like I'm doing right here with my towel, my dirty old towel. So you see it's not dripping. I could shake those things and they're not gonna, just get it damp. It just needs to be damp. It's all over my fingers. Look, it's not gonna give me cancer though. I'm gonna get it damp and I'm gonna actually take all the paint off my brush right now and get it back to where, where you should start. Just so you can see. I'm gonna take this one, set it aside, cause we don't need it right now. And I'm gonna take another piece of board here. A little board. I don't know what it is, I don't know. The wood. And I'm gonna take it on my damp brush, same amount of paint. And I'm gonna start doing the same thing. Now you can see it's a thinner coat that goes on. 
I didn't actually have as much. My mic cord is now purple, y'all. Like I literally just painted my mic purple. But you can run it on there with the slight water on it. And I cover this whole board with that dip that I just did. I'm going back and forth. Tiny little dip of paint covered this whole board. It's not pulling off right now. It's much smoother. It's more what you're used to when you're painting with latex paint. So if you've painted before and you've painted for years and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna get on there, I'm gonna paint this chalk paint. This will help you get that texture that you're used to when you're painting. So this will give you that, that flow that you're used to because trust me now this is just a tiny little piece of wood right but if I had a dresser in here like okay say I wanted to paint this bookshelf back here a new color and I just went at the side of it the big side of it with one dip into the chalk paint I would hate it I did the first time I ever got chalk paint I was just like oh I know how to use paint what do you need a class for? <laughs> I was so stupid. I hated it. I hated it. I was literally painting and it would get gummy and start dragging and I'm trying to do this dresser and I was so mad and it was, I had to go take a class. I took the class. I didn't buy the brush, but I took the class. I'm just saying. And with this, I can now do like the entire side with just a little tiny bit of paint. It's ridiculous the amount of paint you need. Honestly, you need very little paint to cover like a whole big piece. This thing would do a dresser, I swear. This is a 10 ounce or eight ounce. It's double the size of our competitor. It's a generous sample, but um, when I first started and I started just running it along and it was drying before I even got halfway done with the piece, I was so frustrated. But what I like about it now is I know what I need to do to the brush to sort of prep the brush and get it ready to go. And, you know, I can get to the other side of the dresser and when I finish that second side, the first side's ready for another coat of paint. Like literally I can just, I can whip out a piece in an afternoon. I love that. I love that so much, so much. Because if you're like me and you're turning out pieces right and left, and I'm just gonna fill in these little gaps here because it bugs me. Oh, I don't need to paint this. Um, I'm gonna stop. But if you're like me and you gotta paint a piece quickly, like kids sleeping or, you know, she's getting ready to get out of school and you got to go pick her up and you want to finish this piece real quick it's really nice that it dries that fast um, the reason why I have multiple colors out here is because I'm going to show you like here's the first piece I did it's dry there's like a couple spots can you see the little glossy spots it's pretty much dry though dry dry there are a couple little wet spots on there where the paint was thicker but yeah it's pretty much dry that's just amazing right you can go ahead and start the second coat now the second coat I gotta talk to you about the second coat because the second coats even worse than the first coat I, I don't mean to like rain on your parade or be in your cornflakes or whatever um, but yeah, the, the second coat sometimes can be worse if you're not ready for what's going to happen. Because the base coat, it is dry, but chalk paint doesn't cure for like the first two weeks. It takes a long time to cure. And it's good and it's bad. The good part is because it takes so long for it to cure, like totally adhere to that piece where it's not coming off. It's just not coming up. Uh, is that you can distress it 
way easy. If you haven't yet seen my video on water distressing, I will put a link in the cards above. Again, I'm not sure where, probably over here. It's <laughs> probably going to be like a little text that runs across the bottom and says, nope, wrong again. So let, let's, it's one of these places. Um, but watch the water distressing video because you'll see how easily it is to take and get that distress finish that everybody's looking for. With that, you can do multiple colors and coats and things like that. And then, you know, distress it back and see those layers of color come up through it. That's what's wonderful about it. Aside from the drying time, the fact that you don't have to prep a piece uh, beyond cleaning it, <laughs> that dirt's natural. You could, you could paint over dirt. I've painted over dirt. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not proud of it, but I got so excited. I just sort of jumped in and then realized, oh, it's really dirty in the corners and I should have probably cleaned it. Then I just kept going. Because, um, <laughs> you know, once you're in, now this is getting like way dry. I want it to be way dry just because I want to put a contrasting color over this and show you because I, I think it helps illustrate my point about the second coat. I have to pause you guys and because there's this one goopy spot right there. See that one goopy spot? It doesn't want to, doesn't want to dry. Um, yeah, but I think, you know, that's the brilliance of chalk paint is that that finish that everybody's looking for, that sort of, um, multi-layered color like time worn that you've painted in a hundred different colors that's what you're gonna get with chalk paint so that's what people want and that's why it's brilliant that it doesn't cure within two weeks I mean I can walk away from a piece and look at it a couple days later and go oh you know I should have distressed it here or I should have done this and I don't need to grab a piece of sandpaper and potentially get too far down I can just take a wet cloth, again, check the video. I can just take a wet cloth and rub it back and get that look that I'm looking for so I can kind of tweak things here and there. And who doesn't like look at things later and go, I should have, could have done it. I should have done this. Always, always, that always happens. Like you always have moments where you're, where you're thinking, I could have done this better. I should have done that better. I'm going with this is dry. So this hand is the one that I got all icky before, but dry, dry enough. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to clean and I'm going to get it very wet this time. Not too wet. Now that's where I wish I could like, have you all right here with me so that I could show you, but you want it to drip a little bit. No, it's not going to drip for me. But there is water. There it went. Of course, when it was off camera. Let's try that again. Yeah, okay, so you saw it. It's dripping a little bit. I'm not going to dry it on the towel. I'm going to run it along the side of the can to get the excess off. Because you want that second coat to be more wet than the first coat, which sounds like the craziest thing ever. But if that second coat is too dry, for some reason, it gums, like literally gums up. But get a little water. And sometimes, and frankly, every time, I'm not gonna even say sometimes, every time I do this, I do the second coat. I don't even typically wet the brush. What I'll do is thin the paint itself. And I do mean just a little bit. I will take two, three or four drops of water, whatever I feel like on that day, but drops of water into the, the actual paint jar, the second coat for the second coat. And then I'll work with it wet because I just, it, it's smoother. It seems to level itself out better. If you don't know what that is, it's that like texture where you start seeing the brush marks and things like that. I don't tend to like that texture. Oh, the second one's dry now too. 
Um, that one dri dried faster. So, um, I, but I don't tend to like seeing the brush strokes or roller marks. And yes, you can roll chalk paint. That's a different topic. I'll get to that. I'll get to it. I'm getting to it. But I'm going to take this and watch. This is way wet now. And I'm going to put this on here. And it's not going to stick. It's not going to gum. It's not going to be like this horrible experience. Now, if this was purple, you wouldn't see that. You, you would um, <laughs> just have a hot mess of a moment. As I told you, this office is just a hot mess right now. But if this were purple, you wouldn't see like all these marks in here. So it is covering quite nice. It's You're getting that nice finish. So when I do this, see the marks? They're nice and straight and flat and even. And as if this were laying like this, this were sitting like this, they'd sort of like flatten themselves down because of that little tiny bit of water. See that? Yes, I actually make my students use two different contrasting colors and I make them do this. And I make them, I actually make them do a second coat without any water so they can feel the difference. If you had gone to town and just tried it dry both times, you'd be so frustrated right now. I'm not kidding. I know I was when I first started using chalk paint. So that's my little tip and trick for that. And let's see, you know what, we're in my office. <laughs> I got a butt ton of projects that need to be done. So I'm gonna grab a frame here. Don't look at my mess. All right, I got a frame. It was 50 cents at a garage sale. It's about to get a takeover. So, I'm gonna grab my pink and I want you to grab a frame of your own okay I want you to do this on a project I want you to do it on a piece of furniture or a frame or I always recommend a frame dry your brush just so it's damp so it's like the first coat because we're working on our first coat I want you to take your brush and I want you to go ahead on your first coat it may be the only coat you need frankly this is probably going to be the only coat this needs, to tell you the truth. And I want you to go to town and paint. So you can feel what it's like when it's properly wet. Because if this were not wet enough, you would be, you'd feel the hang up from the wood. Remember when you tried it? If you're trying this along with me, if you start to feel that drag when you're doing the frame, get a little water on here. Just take a tiny little bit of water and get your brush damp. You should not feel a drag at all. You won't feel the drag. You will have a nice smooth motion. When you use your brush, and you can use an art brush for something like this. You don't have to use a big old paint brush like this is way too big of a brush for this project. But you'll feel that nice, smooth movement of the paint. You won't have the uh, 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 kind of like a stuttering feel as you're painting. So just trust me, if you did it with the wood block, you would feel that drag. You know what I'm talking about. So grab your frame and I want you to practice. I want you to practice. Get, if it's too wet, this will drip. So you can see mine's not dripping. That paint's not going anywhere. If it's dripping, you have too much water. It should be like this. It should just coat nicely and stay in place. But you won't feel a drag. You'll feel a nice smooth movement, but there won't be dripping. No dripping. You have too much water that's dripping, okay? So it's pretty easy once you know the trick. And then you can go back and do the second coat. Just get it a little more wet. 
and I would recommend taking a little bit of your chalk paint. If you're worried about putting water into your pot, you shouldn't be because it's a water-based paint. It's not going to hurt it. Um, but if you don't want to, some people don't want to, and I've, I've had even people that are furniture refinishers and flippers like me who are like, oh no, I'd never put water in my paint. And I'm like, that's fine. That's fine. Get a little cup, put your paint in it, and put a couple drops of water in there, thin it down for your second coat. I promise you that's going to make painting with chalk paint so much easier. You know what? I just feel like I want you guys to know that, okay, you can reach out to me if you're struggling with something with chalk paint. Email me. My email is in the links below. Email me and say, Stacy, this is happening. What's going on? What am I doing wrong? I want to be able to help you. I can't help you if I don't know what the problem is. So please just email me and tell me what's going on and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if it's something that I think everyone can benefit from knowing, I will be more than happy to do a really, really quick live video and you guys can log in and ask me questions. Um, if that's something you want, let me know. Just send me an email or put a comment in the, in the add a comment below and let me know what you're struggling with. I'm more than happy to teach you. I've been teaching this for years and it's pretty much, I have seen it all. I've seen it all. I actually work one-on-one -on -one with people. So I've gone to their house and helped them paint their buffet and we've worked on things together. So if there's something that you're struggling with, I can probably help you. Okay, so don't be shy and don't be afraid. I want you to love this product as much as I do. I want you to be able to take this and do your own projects. Make your house pretty. Shop your house. You have the perfect piece in the perfect spot. It just needs an update, right? Yes, and then people pay people like me to update it. You don't need me. If you can do it yourself, I promise you, it's easy. I even paint with my rings on, people. I had a woman comment once, do you really paint with your rings? Yeah, yeah, it's not gonna stick. Like I said, two weeks, two weeks. I had two weeks to clean that paint off my rings and if I don't, I'm a, it's my own dumb fault. It's my own dumb fault. But thanks for watching everyone. If there's something you would like to see, please comment below. Please email me, tell me what you're struggling with. What's your pain point? I'm happy to help. Um, thank you. So give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I am still doing the big giveaway. Also, if you'd like to go to my website and sign up for my email list, I have a free a furniture flipping toolkit that I am giving away for subscribers. So there's a really cool project planner in there. There is a really great um, booth setup worksheet. The planner worksheet is helpful and I'm going to start using it in 2019 on a regular basis. That's one of my, I don't want to say resolutions, I'm going to say goals because I don't like resolutions because they're ridiculous and they get flushed down the toilet right away, but I am going to set goals for 2019 and maybe I'll do a video on that for you guys so you can keep me accountable for my goals. But um, yeah, I it's a really great toolkit. It's got some great resources in there. It's got uh, a lot of great pro tool tips and you know what, it's just kind of a fun piece. So if you want to go over there and get signed up, I'll be happy to email it to you. Thanks for watching, everyone. I appreciate it, and happy junkin'. Bye. Visit my blog, PeonyLaneDesigns.com, for more tips, tricks, and inspiration. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll be notified of new videos. I post every week DIY tutorials and, of course, more junkin' videos.